Energies hit fast. Reactive acts fast. Good morning, Toronto. Welcome back to BT. Lindsay Tam Sid here with you. I forgot to promo. I wake up with BT. That was my bad in the last segment. <laughs> I wake up with BT. It's coming after 8 o'clock. You know the rules, man. You know what's going on. You know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. You, a lot of you watch. You get it. All right. Uh, as, as Tammy's been reporting all week, the, uh, the submersible story uh, from Ocean Gate at the Titanic wreck, this has been the story, all right? Mm -hmm. And now you have a story has to really break through nowadays to just capture everyone's attention. This was one of them, and it came to a tragic end yesterday. I don't, I don't know how shocking this was for people, because when it hit me, it, did, it wasn't a shocking feeling. I think most people assumed the worst, but to hear it, obviously, it affected a lot of people. Uh, the, the five folks aboard the Titan did not make it. They called it a catastrophic implosion. The U.S. Coast Guard announced it yesterday. The debris was found roughly 500 meters from the actual wreck of the Titanic, which is unbelievable. Hours later, it was confirmed the debris was consistent with an implosion, not an explosion, an implosion. Families of the crew of the Titan have been notified, and we're also learning, the Wall Street Journal's currently reporting that U.S. Navy officials picked up an anomaly on Sunday that was likely the implosion, but they didn't know at all what it was at the time. Could be anything, because there's a lot of, the one thing we're learning here is there's a lot of sounds that come out of the ocean all the time. Uh, but when you do the math on it, now it, it feels like that's what it was. Invest, investigations obviously are underway. Uh, rescue efforts are underway to retrieve as much as humanly possible. Uh, Tam, I want to start with you here, because I think one of the talking points coming off this is a lot of people are interested at why there is this much interest. Uh, a lot of people are wondering... And I think it's a valid question, why this captivated so many people's attention. Where do you go first with that? Uh, well, you know, we were talking about this earlier this week because all week long, like if you even put it on CNN, it is the coverage wall to wall. Mm -hmm. And the and I agree, it's the rescue. Uh, we've seen this before with other big rescues. The Chilean miners, of course, uh, come to mind right away. The soccer team in the Philippines as well. We were just engrossed in this because it's happening in real time and you want to see what comes out of it. And you hope for the good news. Unfortunately, in this case, we, we didn't get that. For sure. Let's yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's just something we we don't hear every day. I mean, uh, clearly this has been going on for a few years, but the fact that um, you know it, it went missing and it, it's like okay, well, there's a rescue mission underway. And I, I mean, I just looking at it, you think with that kind of investment into an excursion, so to speak, it would be more regulated or or, or something. That's where it just doesn't quite meet up. You know, when we, when we even saw footage of, you know, they're using like a essentially a Game Boy controller, video game joystick, to thirty dollars to yeah. to control the whole entire thing. I'm just like, I, I don't know. There's something that doesn't quite match up to me, yeah. and and that's where that's where there's a big question mark. Yeah, I just it's, I think there's a lot here. I think the fact that it was a lot of rich people. Mm -hmm. has added a layer to this because sure. when you and it's and listen if you've been on social media over the last week you've seen the example a lot mm -hmm. of of how uh, of migrants around the world are risking their lives constantly to get out of situations that are hopeless and you you see you see accidents at sea all the time and and the attention for those incidents don't match what we've seen here i think to me another aspect of this is because we're lear we're learning more about ocean gate the company and some of the corners that were cut, like they, they in their in their pamphlets, they say they worked with Boeing on this. Boeing knows nothing about this project. So at its core, again, like it's we're talking about a private company looking to make money, and I don't think we should confuse that with anything from a from the scientific community or any. When when you have privatization, when you have capitalism like that, at two hundred fifty thousand dollars a pop, corners will be cut. I guarantee you. I don't care what the company says. I, I don't care. I guess, and the, and the last part for me is like I'm. If a family member said to me, if one of my brothers said to me, I have two brothers. If they said to me, I'm going down to see the Titanic wreck in one of these things, I'd physically fight them. Yeah. I'd physically fight them. And I know there's two types of human beings. There's very concerned, like people like me 
who don't take a ton of risk, and there's people who all they want to do is take that risk. And all I could think of all week watching this is life is very precious, man. Mm -hmm. Life, I, I don't understand the logic of I have to push this as far as humanly. This was, and this was not, they weren't excavating. They weren't, they weren't as, and we give our condolences to all the families. But this was not, this was not some scientific trek. They were taking selfies where DiCaprio was, in theory. Like, that's what this was. So I just, I think it's just such a horrific shame mm -hmm. that this is how that would end for people when really it didn't have to. And, I, and I've had a hard time all week processing that. And that's where I think another part of this curiosity comes from. Why? Right. Why do you have to push it to that point where more people have been to space than in that wreck? And that's, I think, I think when you combine all those things, the economic disparity, I think that's why it hit with so many people. And unfortunately, it ended the way it was. But to all the people who, who went into that area looking for them, Canadian members of the Coast Guard and Americans, shout out to them, because that was not easy. That was not easy. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break. We have a mayoral election coming to this city Monday. Josh Matlow, counselor, is running for mayor. He's on this couch. Coming up in about five minutes with Tam, Mark Saunders, former chief of police in the city, also running for mayor. Tammy will talk to him at 8 a.m. this morning. Also, if you ever spotted someone standing up on what looks like a surfboard but holding a paddle, that's what stand-up paddle boarding is all about. It's not that complicated. Makes sense. And it looks fun. <laughs> Coming up at 740, Frankie's doing it. You're watching BT. More after this.